a sock plushy workshop and we are going to make some little our own version of usakuma out of a pair of socks um and i'm jessica corlett if you can't already tell by my accent i am in england um in london and but not in england is my glamorous hand assistant do you want to introduce yourself oh it's me i'm Haley, the chair of the bay area k and i've got my socks Haley uh, joined me on the last event where we did. Uh, she was uh, my my um, partner in crime because I like having someone to chat to when I'm doing these things, and I thought it'd be rather fun because then you can see me making one and you can also see Haley one making simultaneously. So we've got 90 minutes. So in 90 minutes, we are going to um, bash out a whole one of these little sakumas. So this is the one we're going to be making today. Now, this is this is like a, this is like a poor lolly to Zusakuma. So, if um, the plague has affected your employment and you're feeling a bit poor, perhaps maybe you don't have much money left to spend on frivolous purchases from Japan. Do not worry, because for the price of a pair of fluffy socks from Target or Primark or wherever, you can Daiso. make. Daiso, oh Daiso! Don't talk to me about Daiso. I'm so jealous that you yeah. have Daiso in America. I would love it so much if there was a Daiso in England and there isn't. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to dive right in because I'm sure lots of you want to just get cracking on this. So, um, as I said, we're making a little Osakuma. Um, so, just kind of anatomy of this one. Um, the first thing we're going to do is the body. Um, so that is the it's sort of like the body and the um, the legs are one piece. Someone here. I'm here and ready to crack. Excellent. I love the enthusiasm. So we're going to do the body, the little sort of bottom and the legs first of all. Then we'll do the head and ears, which is also done as one piece. And then we'll add some arms on at the end. Um, great. And, and we need to do a tail. I'd totally forgotten that this thing had a tail, but of course it does. Now, because this is a poor Lolita's Usakuma, yes, appreciation for the, uh, for the bunny touche. I love it. Uh, because this is a poor Usakuma, unlike the real version where I think you have like a, a hood, um, that pops down. This one's just got a fake hood. If you're super duper clever, I'm sure you can work out a way to like make it so it's got like a little separate hood with ears on. But for today, we're not doing that version. We're just going to do it with little ears and then we're just going to sew a bit of lace on to make that illusion of a bonnet. Amazing. I am loving that so many people are joining in. Thank you so much for coming to join us. So um, a few people have commented on my kitties. Um, I'll just very quickly show you some of these. I'll talk about these a bit more later if we have time. But yeah, I've got a few little I also do these. There's other kinds of sock plushies I do. So little this little kind of cats that I make, which are rather cute. Um, very good fun. Like this is obviously made with a decorative, you know, a leopard print sock. So you definitely can use kind of fancier socks. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. And then I've also got here. This is another one I do. Um, I call this I call this design the basic blob sock pushy because it's basically just a ball with little features added on. I love piggy. So I did a pig. Um, this one's a slightly fancier basic blob because I'll show you its special feature. It also is reversible. So I can turn it inside out and it turns from a little wow. a little piggy into wow. a little penguin. Yes. <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's another kind of sock plushie that I do. Um, if I'm doing this workshop with children, I just get them to do like a basic blob on its own. But a lot of people absolutely love the reversible version um and again yeah just uh, like a few socks that i bought for a couple of pounds from primark they're really cheap things to make and all the little features and stuff you can just do with odds and ends that you've got lying around the house so i should put i'll put my little friends over here next to me for the moment and we're going to focus on miss usakuma i'll just put it down there okay so hopefully you have a pair of socks i have lots of pairs of socks um before um this i was debating um which pair of socks i'm going to use i haven't quite decided um but i think i have now decided that i'm going to go for pink ones um these are actually the same sort of socks that i made this one out of so they're these are bed ladies bed socks 
Um, also because, you know, this is a Valentine's Day event and pink seems very appropriate. So I've got some nice pink socks and these ones, you can see they're sort of smooth on the outside and then they're kind of fuzzy on the inside. So obviously I want the fuzzy side to be the outside. Um, other socks that I love to use are these sorts of ones. I don't know if you can sort of, yeah, I think you can tell what kind those are. They're the sort of typical fluffy socks. I um, I buy these all the time off eBay. They're really cheap on eBay or uh, well, AliExpress. Um, of course, got some other, got very, lots of different kinds of socks, um, all kinds of fluffy socks. Um, again, they're just the kind of things you can get from dollar stores and pound shops. So no expensive materials required. I'm going to throw those out the way and we're going to focus on our pink socks. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to put one of the socks to one side for the moment. We're just going to work with one and we're going to start off by doing the legs and the little bottom and the body of the rabbit. Um, so you want to make sure your sock is inside out. It's very important. So if you've got a sock that's fluffy on the outside, turn it inside out. Now, because I'm actually using the fluffy inside of my sock for this, mine's already the right way around. So you want to, whatever, whatever you want to be the fur or the outside of your usakuma, make sure that's in the middle. So you're looking at the, the reverse of your fabric. So I'm going to do, I'm going to lay it this way and um, I'm going to do it so the heel is sort of upright. There we go. So laying it flat and down. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use the heel to make the little bottom because we want our usakuma to have a nice little chubby bottom that's cute. So we're going to use that extra um, volume area to make the bottom of our rabbit. So um, now I should have mentioned there is a worksheet for this workshop. Um, hopefully someone will be able to pop the link in for you guys. The worksheet looks something like this. And there's actually a second page of worksheet on that link. That link that you'll get at some point, um, there's a second page of worksheet which goes into just a bit more detail about like how to do features and things. So um, there we go. The link is up. So I'm going to go through everything. So don't worry if you don't have this in front of you. But if you want to, you can use that link, download a PDF version, download the other PDF, which talks you through like features and sewing techniques. And you can save this to, for later to either finish this off later on or use if you want to make some more in the future. But as you can see, it's I mean, we're talking it's kiddie level stuff. here. This is not complicated. OK, so we've got our sock. So as I said before, this is the body and the heel um, of the, uh, the this is the this is going to be the body and the bottom and the legs of the rabbit that we're making now. So put your heel so it's upright. And then what you're going to do is I like to sort of I like to fold my heel down. So I'm sort of holding it towards me just so I kind of can sort of see where the bottom is. I'm going to twist it so you can see that. So. I've kind of folded the heel downwards towards the toe of the sock. That's it. Haley's doing a perfect example as well. And then what you're going to do is grab a pen or a pencil or something, a piece of chalk. I've got one of these um, like disappearing felt tips um, that are purposefully designed for textile projects. Um, but if you've got like some chalk or something, if you don't have anything, don't worry. You can just eyeball this because it's not difficult. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to basically I'm going to sketch on where I want my little legs to be. And I'm going to bring them right up into the into the middle so they're touching each other. Now, I found from experience you want the legs to not be too long. Keep them short because what we're aiming for is chubby little body, big babyish cutesy head like Hello Kitty and then little arms. Um, if the limbs and the body and the arms start getting too long, um, it, it just it, it loses that kind of big head baby kawaii aesthetic. So keep the legs nice and short. OK, so I'm just sort of doodling on my little little lines that are going to be my guidelines. And I do recommend drawing these on if you can, because it helps. OK, so those are my guidelines. And now I'm going to what I might do is I might just put a couple of I'm just going to put a couple of pins in here. There we go. Just a couple of pins um, just to kind of hold it in place. And I'm going to grab a needle and thread. Now, hopefully you guys are using the same color thread as your um, 
as your material that you're working with. Um, I'm using white just because uh, if I was just doing this for myself, I'd obviously use pink, but I want, I'm hoping that with white, my stitches will show up a little bit better for you guys. Um, if I was like a crazy, you know, really professional YouTuber doing this, I'd probably use black thread. But the problem with that is if I did it with black, yeah, you can see the stitches, but then, oh, I don't know, it just isn't so nice. I can't really like enjoy it afterwards. So I'm going to use white and I'm pretty confident my stitch is going to sew up. So I've tied a knot in the end of my thread. Um, you might depend, I've got like very strong polyester thread here. Um, but if your thread isn't like super strong thread, maybe do double, do double thread and put a knot in the end because you want it to be good and strong. And what we're going to do is we're basically going to do back stitches along here. Now, what's important is when you do up the up the crotch of the of the bunny rabbit, um, make sure you go up and then down because you're going to have to cut up in the middle um, in between those little legs. So make sure you've got, you know, a little a little space. I might just might just doodle that on there just to make it really clear. There we go. Hopefully that's clear. So you make sure you're going up and down because you're going to have to be able to cut up cut up between the legs when you turn it inside out okay so there you go once you've got your needle and thread just go for it start doing your stitches i've got far too much thread here never mind um start doing stitches and i'm doing kind of like a sort of a chunky back stitch chunky back stitch um you could do this on a machine but i don't i, I wouldn't bother because it's i mean it's probably just as quick to do it by uh, backstitch. Also, I feel like backstitch has just a little bit more like give in it, a little bit more stretch. Um, I think if you did it on a machine, it's more likely that your stitching is going to pop when you stuff it. So I think it's it's nice to do this by hand. That's my opinion. <laughs> I can see someone said they've arrived. So if anyone's arrived late, do not worry. We've only just got cracking. What we're doing at the moment is we are just sewing uh, some little legs. We've used the heel of our soccer's guideline um, to show us where the kind of the crotch of the rabbit is going to be. And we've drawn some little legs and we're just doing a back stitch to, to stitch those little little legs so that we can turn them out later on. And as I said before, there is if you scroll back through the, the chat, there's a link to a worksheet. So anyone that's joined late, don't worry. There is a worksheet. Go find that link. It's just it's like about eight comments back at the moment. And that will um, give you all the all the information. And if you are watching this effectively on catch up on YouTube or on Twitch later on, we'll make sure we have the link to that worksheet in the description as well um, so that you can find it later on. <laughs> There we go. So yeah, just lots of lots of stitching to do now, really. How are you getting on, Haley? Uh, these are really fluffy, so I'm having a hard time telling. Oh, this this is this is the advantage of doing these with fluffy socks. If your stitching's a bit rubbish, no one's gonna see because the socks are fluffy. Yeah, so well, I can't even tell if I'm on the line. It's just I'm just I'm I'm amused. I think I'm doing fine, but I'm like, hmm, who yeah. knows? It's a mystery. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. That sounds good. Thread's a little short, so I'm gonna have to tie off and get a new one, but do you have a link for those people who don't do a lot of hand sewing to show them what a back stitch is? Oh, um uh, down off the top of my head, but if you just look up back stitch on YouTube, you'll find it. Yeah. Um also in on the, the worksheet. So the worksheet that we've got a link for, um, it doesn't have back stitch on, but it's got there's two other stitches that we're going to be using later on. And it's got both of those on the second part of the worksheet. Um, so, yeah, if you're if you're not a pro stitcher, which you really don't need to be for this, as I said, I've done this with kids. It's very, very user friendly. And because like the that's the nice thing, socks are a great craft. It's a great way to start making soft toys if you've never done it before, because they're so stretchy. You can kind of like just stuff them and sculpt them to make a nice shape. There we go. Now, I've, I've actually done quite small back stitches, but I've already got to the end on mine. 
I'm quite quite speedy. So please don't worry if you're not sewing as fast as me. So if I'm, I'm going to hold that up to camera. I can take the pins out now because it's all stitched. Put them on the pin cushion. Um, so there you go. I've just got, you can see I've sort of got two, two little, a little kind of legs. And then there's, I've left a gap. My gap is sort of, I'd say, mm, probably about not quite a centimetre, maybe like three quarters of centimetre, the gap in between the legs up the middle. Yeah. So now, now that I've done that, and then obviously I've got my heel sticking up here, that's going to be our chubby bottom on our rabbit when we stuff it. Okay. Now I've got, get your shears. And um, I'm going to, I'm just going to cut probably about quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch, sort of half a centimetre away from my stitch line. Because these socks, because socks are so stretchy, you don't like, you know, normally if you were making something, you would cut out all your pattern pieces first and then you'd sew them. You really don't, don't want to do that with socks because they're so stretchy. Like, it's just going to be really hard to sew. It's much easier to sew your little shapes first and then cut them out, um, just so that your fabric doesn't ping around all over the place. Okay, so I've just, I've just, little, it's like a little bottom shape, isn't it? Um, we're going to talk about bums so much in this workshop, aren't we? I can just see how this is going to go. Um, okay, and now I'm just going to cut up in between the legs, being very careful not to um, cut through my stitches. And I've, I mean, I've left about half a centimetre um, aware of seam allowance. <laughs> it's it's just all like degenerating already, isn't it? Um, great, I love it. Uh, I've left about half a centimetre um, at the top between my stitch line. You know, sometimes when you're cutting curves and things in sewing, you like, you're told to clip your curves. Because we're working with really stretchy fabric, you don't need to do that for this. And because socks is, are, is a knit fabric, um, you know, there is the risk that it, the knit fabric might start unraveling. Um, right. OK, so that is that is there you go. You can kind of see what's going on here. Here's my here's my rabbit. Here's my sock. You can sort of see see the similarity going on there. OK, so now I'm going to turn it fluffy side out and we will get and just push it out with your fingers. Oh my gosh, I forgot how fluffy these socks are. These socks I've got, they're kind of like, they're not so fluffy to start off with. And then the more you touch them, the fluffier they get. Um, these these would be terrible socks to make a, to a present for a child out of because this bunny would just get filthy really quickly. <laughs> but, but, you know, the advantage of what we're doing is, I mean, if you're, if you're like, careful about like what little features you choose like using buttons and things for the eyes and stuffing that can go in the washing machine these can be machine washable you can just you can make one for a child when it gets filthy you can just throw it in the washing machine okay so i've got my little fluffy he, at the moment he is looking ridiculously tall um so obviously i do not want him to be that tall long boy <laughs> very long boy at the moment you can see how people make like monkeys out of socks they use the sort of full length okay so now you're gonna get, get some stuffing don't cut him off at the neck yet because we will decide where that neck is going to be based on how much so stuff up his little little feet little feet <laughs> Are we having a good time? What colour socks is everyone using? Can people comment and let me know what colour socks you're using? Mine are kind of like a sax blue with kind of vanilla ivory polka dots. Love it. I love print. Using printed socks is really good fun. Um, off white, white. OK, white is traditional. Definitely traditional for an Usakuma. OK, so I've padded out his little feet. Lavender pastel yellow. I love it. I was really considering doing I've got some lavender socks and I did think, should I do a lavender one? But then I thought, wait a second, it's Valentine's Day. It's gone at Gatto. I feel like I should be doing pink and red as a theme. Amazing. <laughs> I think someone's saying, imagine a long Usakuma. I think a long Usakuma would be slightly scary. It's very easy to make creepy looking soft toys. You know, like if you wanted to, you could totally do 
a um a creepy version of this um you know kind of creepy cute um but i at the moment i'm just i'm just going for sort of traditional usakuma okay so i'm starting to stuff my little usakuma body i like to stuff these quite plump because i think they're cuter when they're chubbier my to be honest my version of usakuma is probably even chubbier than baby's version of usakuma but i like chubby things and lots of padding like i'm pushing it down into his little bottom because i want him to have a nice round little bottom because that would be cute okay so okay this is the part where you probably don't you can kind of swim around and like make sure he's a nice turning out to be a nice shape so this is the part where i would recommend don't make him too tall like if you look at my if you look at my usakuma here his body is basically the same size as his head i would say um uh i you I, I personally i think it's nice to have the body either the same size as the head or smaller um i just think it's kind of gives it that kawaii look so i'm actually i've kind of that's how far i've got with my stuffing i think i'm actually going to stop there i think that's enough stuffing for me just give me a little squish. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my big shears and I'm going to just literally hack him off at the neck. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to, we're going to grab our, um, I want to bring his neck forward a little. So I'm actually going to, because at the moment it's, can you see at the moment he's sort of like leaning backwards? So I think I'm actually going to trim it, trim his neck down a little more at the front just so that I can bring that you know the kind of point of his neck like up onto the top more so he's going to look a bit more upright does somebody want to see me make a long boy <laughs> I'm sure someone will <laughs> okay I'm going to make a long boy <laughs> 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 your your some your your socks look like clouds, Haley. Yeah, I love it. I really like it. It can be an accessory to go with. Which one is it? Milky Sky by AP. Yeah, <laughs> they are definitely excited. <laughs> okay, so I've got so I've I've kind of decided that's that's where I'm stopping with my stuffing. And I've got my little neck all ready to go. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna do like a drawstring. So like basic front, so big knot in the end of your um in the end of your in the end of your thread. Um if you if like depending on your socks, you might find that your socks are kind of a looser knit. So for instance, like this this little adorable creature here that I've got with the um with a little leopard print so sweet but like this it has it's got such big holes in it. it's a really really loose weave so for him if you've got if your if your knit is quite a loose weave you might want to obviously put a knot in the end but then you might actually want to start by just doing a couple of back stitches on top of each other just to make sure it's it's going to fix in place and your thread's not going to pop out then you're going to do running stitch down up down up down up all the way around like a drawstring <laughs> i have a, another tip for those of you who have done a double thread if you want to anchor it just use the double thread and feed it through like once you've taken like a stitch and feed it through and that'll create an anchor uh oh yes yes i know what you mean so you you like you catch the loop at yep. the end of the double thread yep good very, I used to do that very, on millinery on like straw hats because you yeah. can't all the hats will just tear if you completely yeah with with millinery you want to do like as few stitches as possible don't you yeah yeah try to be very gentle yeah um my millinery teacher always said you used to want to like attach things as if they've just fallen onto the hat. yeah that's what they say like especially in the british school they're like it should, it should look effortless yeah. <laughs> like it's oh, just yeah. landed that's there that is exactly it. I, I basically did the British schools of millinery. So I, I studied many years ago at London College of Fashion and I did a costume for the performing arts. Yeah, so I had a friend who did too. So I'm, I'm but, familiar uh, with the the the, the verbiage. It was it was a delicious three years of my life making corsets and bonnets and all kinds of pretty things. I loved it. I loved children's wear. It was kind of, I wasn't even into Lolita back then. It was sort of a predecessor to like the fact that I was gonna get into Lolita. Um, my final 
degree project was a Victorian school uniform. Oh, it was just it was so cute. I loved it so much. It was it was a real treat of three years. Okay, so hopefully you can see where I'm at. So I've done. Sorry, this looks horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sorry. I'm just gonna be over here with my floppy dog. So if you want to do a really long one, you can do what Haley's doing, uh, or you can do what I'm doing and do a short one, uh, which will look cute. <laughs> no, I'm being mean. Yours is gonna look lovely, Haley. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so I've done my running stitch round the top, so as it sort of acts like a drawstring, and I'm just gonna pull it up. This is why it's a good idea to have like quite strong thread or double your thread. And as I pull it up, I'm going to like push all the raw edges inside. So you kind of get a little kind of puckered hole on the top. Gonna have a sphincter. <laughs> God. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm very inappropriate. <laughs> okay. So, and now I'm just doing a few little stitches on top of each other. To be fair, I walked into that one, didn't I? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, I did. Okay, that was my fault. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm doing a few little stitches on top of each other. Uh, don't worry if this isn't super neat because we're going to whack a head and all kinds of lace and bows on top of it. So no one's ever going to see. Um, it's the great thing about this craft. Cause it's fluffy, it's stretchy, and then you can put loads of like frilly bits on it to hide all the stitching afterwards anyway. So it really doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Okay, so there we have it. So that is, that there is, it looks very strange at the moment, but that is my little, my little body done. And as I said, we used the heel um, of the sock to give us that extra fabric to give them a like plump little bottom yeah right okay so pop that to one side we are going to so now you should all have you should all have another whole sock left and then some bits of sock i always say keep all the bits i actually have a bag i have a bag of sock bits from like other ones i've made because you know other ones that you do in the future like so for this um this little penguin i made like i he was predominantly made out of one black sock but i needed a scrap of white to make his little face and tummy so hold on to those scraps because you can use them as details on other socks later on um okay so we're now going to do the head of our usakuma and if i'm being honest like if you only had one sock you could make this out of one sock um, because you could maybe do the head out of this bit with the ears attached on, and then you could use this bit here for the arms. So you could do it all out of one sock if you really wanted to. But I like to do it out of two socks because I really like using the heels to help me with the shaping. So I'm going to use my second sock. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the heel to um, make the sort of muzzle of the bunny. Um, if I show you on... Here we go. I did it on this one here. So this is a pattern sock I used. I did the head in exactly the same way as I'm going to show you now. Um, so on this sock, uh, the heels of the sock didn't have any pattern on. Um, so that made quite a nice feature on the face because then you can see there's like a blonde bit here where his little face is and then the print happens further up. So we're using that heel to make the chin of the Yusukuma. Um, OK, so what are you going to do? this time does honestly doesn't matter which way um you flop the heel up or down because it's not going to make any difference at all Quick um, question. is this right side out or this is right side in again so like i've got so my sock it's quite easy to see because it's it's smooth on one side and it's fluffy on the other side so if you've got a sock like mine like that's you know a very clear right side and a wrong side make sure your right side is inside so okay. it's inside out so i've got my fluffy side inside you can see Haley has just pulled hers the other way around as well okay so what you're going to do here we're going to again you're going to flop down your heel doesn't matter which way really doesn't matter flop down your heel because you're going to use the curve of the heel as a guide to help you mark where your um where your stitch line is going to be so i'm basically going to copy that curve onto the lower edge of the sock like that 
there we go so we're not going to stitch through the heel it's just to give us a guideline for the curve so when we sew this up this seam line here will kind of be across the back of the rabbit's head it's basically where it ends up being joined onto the neck that's where this stitch line will be once we make it so you've got your curved line there and then up above you might want to flop your heel the other way just to help you give a little guide because this heel shaping is kind of giving us that round space that's kind of giving us the idea of the the head of the rabbit and then you can draw on your ears on the top and you can just make them as long or as short as you want to they're kind of going a bit like it's really just like doing the legs again almost um so i'm just drawing on some little ears here I'm not making them too long because I'm going to do little upright ears like this one here. Now, Usakuma obviously have ears that flop down. So if you want to, you could do longer ears and then not stuff them to give it like floppy ears that hang down. It's up to you. There's all kinds of ways you can play around. Also, you can very easily like do small, do little bear ears, little cat ears, you know, whether you're making a bear or a cat or whatever. Apparently, I heard there is a, a Neko Kuma, is it? Apparently, it's very rare. There is a cat, a cat Kuma. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then what we're going to do, so once you've marked those lines on, um, if you want to, put a couple of pins in. I'm probably just going to put in a couple just above where I'm stitching, just like one below just to stop it from bouncing around. Um, and then you're going to stitch. I'll just hold it up. Hopefully you can see that. So we've marked the stitch lines for the head of our rabbit. So we've done a, a curved line under the heel and that's going to help make a nice rounded face. And then I've drawn on two little bunny ears and I've kept them quite short, but you can make them as long or as short as you want. You can do cats or bunnies teddies or whatever now wh what i'm going to say now when we sew this up what i want you to do we we have to turn this inside out once we finish sewing you should leave your hole at the base of where the ears are so just here so what you're going to do is you're going to go sew round one ear and then stop sew round the other ear and then stop so that you have a hole in the middle here that's where i would suggest you leave your hole Okay, but the one at the bottom, you can just go straight across. Okay, so we'll crack on with doing that. So, again, not at the end of your thread and just a nice little chunky back stitch. Um, doesn't be neat because it's all stretchy and fluffy and it's not going to show. I know we're all using fluffy socks for this, but you can make lovely, lovely sock plushies just out of regular socks too. Please don't feel you have to have fluffy socks for this because you really don't. I've seen some absolutely gorgeous plushies just made out of regular socks <laughs> how's yours getting on are you, how are you getting on Haley? good i'm i've got some longer ears for my longer boy yeah <laughs> yep Haley, did i did i spot on the schedule that you you did or were doing a, a a panel as well at some point oh no not not this time around I'm doing closing ceremonies uh, ah. but that is all I'm doing this time around. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you just got roped in to help me again. Thank you so much. <laughs> no problem. But no, yeah, no. I'm, there's just a lot of like mm, behind the scenes stuff that I'm responsible for. So it's a lot to do panels. So and and lot, so. Honestly, the, t the team that organized this are amazing. They are, they are awesome. fantastic. And I love each and every one of them. <laughs> so professional I just, they're just a dream to work with i uh, my my day job is obviously i don't do exactly this is a day job but my day job is i am an arts and events coordinator and i do a lot of workshops and i um run arts and events program of activities for um housing trust in london and do lots of other things and yeah it's um it's lovely to have like such a professional lolita event to be part of it's really nice oh thank you i'm so glad that it's a good experience yeah right okay i've run out of thread so i'm doing some more thread so i've just i'll just show you i've just you can see quite clearly i've done my stitch line curved stitch line across the bottom now i'm gonna do the ears and i'm gonna sew these um separately and leave the gap in the middle between the ears at the base of the ears in the center for anyone else has joined late um 
rest assured you do not need to miss out there is a worksheet that you can download um there is if you scroll back through the comments you'll find a link to it if you're watching this later on we'll make sure that there you go it's been posted again thank you so much um there's a link to the work so if you just joined us don't worry grab yourself a copy of that worksheet it will tell you everything you need to know to do this later on or to join in now if you've only just just arrived and as i said if you're watching this uh later on on youtube we'll make sure it's that worksheet's linked in the comments as well for you later on uh, but don't worry if you don't have it, because I am going to be showing you everything you need to do as we go along. <laughs> Someone's asked, do you have a thread conditioner that you like to keep the candles away? Um, I use beeswax. Um, thread conditioner is not a big thing in the UK, to be honest. I know it is. I know thread conditioners are very common in America um, because you've got such a huge quilting industry. Um, but no, I've only I, the only thing I've ever used is beadwax. I'm using quite a thick um like polyester, really strong polyester thread for this. So I definitely don't need to condition this thread that I'm working with at the moment. But um, yeah, I'm old fashioned. I, I mean, I learned, I learned my, my sewing techniques at probably the most old fashioned British costume school there is. And yeah, it was all just traditional techniques, beeswax, you know, very, I'm a big fan of the beeswax too, because, yeah. you know, it's also not some sort of weird manufactured thing. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm sure um I'm sure I, I heard that like it's it's something that like they found you know they've dug up historical um clothing like ancient ancient clothing you know from like Egyptian times and have found evidence of beeswax still on the threads. Yeah. Um you know it's not something that's gonna if it, if the Egyptians were using it and we're still doing it, then it you know don't knock it. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say that, you know, I'm sure I know there are some wonderful, um, like synthetic um, thread conditioners out there. But um, yeah, we wouldn't, I guess we don't really know how they're going to survive in 200 years time, do we? Whereas beeswax is still going strong. <laughs> so I've done, I've just sewn, you can see here, I've sewn one ear. Is that showing up? I've sewn one ear and then I've stopped at the base like basically at the top of the head of the rabbit. And now I've started, got a new bit of thread and I've started on the, the next ear. Just looking, how are we doing time? Oh, I feel like we're doing, we're doing okay. I had, a vague, I had a schedule for this. We are we are pretty much on track at the moment. Hooray. Whoa, okay, but I do need to keep sewing quickly. I would say that like, if you never heard of beeswax though, or like thread conditioners in general, it's not something you would come across unless you end up doing a lot of hand sewing. So I think people who yeah. do like costume work or couture work tend to find out about it more than your typical everyday sewer. Yeah. I've got a feeling my stitching on this second year is a little bit wonky, but I really am not at all slow fussed because I know it doesn't matter. It does, if your stitching is wonky or messy, it doesn't matter because we're going to stuff it and it's stretchy and no, it will never, ever show. Okay. That's a good question. Do you have, do you have a favorite uh, thimble? Oh, do I have a favorite thimble? Um, it's really cute. But yeah, I have my great grandmother's thimble, um, uh, which just so happens to fit me perfectly. So that is my go to thimble. Though, I love it. That's my favorite one. Um, but if I'm honest, I actually have about th I have like three thimbles that I ke keep in my um, uh, that I keep in my sewing kit all the time because I find sometimes my fingers are like bigger or smaller. So some days I go to grab a thimble and like it's too tight or it's too loose. So I actually have three that I swap between. But maybe that's just my hands. They seem to get puffier and thinner like depending on what time of day it is i don't know what? that's fair i have a um i have a leather one that's my favorite because it's a little bit more flexible <laughs> oh yeah I, i've got a leather one as well but i just keep defaulting back to the metal one that I know. when i was a student i just got so used to having my form i think about get on the london underground and get like an hour across london before i realized that i still have my thimble on Oh, that's a nice. Is that the clover one? Yeah, this is my favorite thimble. Yeah, I've I've seen that recommended a lot. Right, it is okay. fantastic. So 
I have done all the stitching for my little uh, bunny rabbit's face there. So I've got two ears. There's a gap in the middle where I'm going to turn it inside out and then a big curve on the bottom. So again, we're going to cut it out now. Always better to cut it after you've done the stitching because it's so stretchy. And I'm again, I'm cutting about like probably mm, oh, how big? Like it's less than a centimeter, but more than a quarter of an inch. About three quarters of a centimeter. Don't don't worry about it too much. But what is yeah. that an inch? <laughs> <laughs> three quarters of a centimeter. Uh, yeah, about three quarters, not quite a centimeter, just under a centimeter. And I'm going to cut down into between the ears, but not all the way to where my stitching was, because I'm going to need to be able to stitch that up afterwards. Okay. So okay. Maybe three eighths, maybe. Uh, no, I, maybe, maybe it's, it's less than half an inch. Anyway, yes, three eighths, three eighths, that sounds, yes, I get, I get you, yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, so, I've got my little, I've got my little bunny head cut out now. Okay, so now we turn it inside out, out, inside out of, it, it probably is quite a small hole, my hole is very small, I probably should have left it a bit bigger, but it doesn't matter, it's so stretchy, it's fine. So I'm turning, turning inside out. There you go. I left the tiniest of holes. And because this is such a stretchy material that we're working with, it actually does not matter at all. Whoa. Sorry, there's a loud noise out front. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it where you are, Haley? Uh, it's noon. So noon. there's lots of activity. I live on a very busy commercial street. Uh, but... Yeah. Well, it is 8 p.m. where I am in London town. And very dark. I had to make sure I have my good lighting set up for this. <laughs> yeah, I live across the street from like a, a small grocery store. So sometimes they'll still be like doing deliveries. Yeah. And the trucks can be quite loud. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Once you've got it turned inside out again, you're going to stuff it. Um, now, as I said, so the, the heel of the sock is going to be the chin of the rabbit and if i turn this over you can you can see my my curved stitch line that is i'm going to have that on the back of the head of the rabbit so it won't be very visible that stitch line um so when you're stuffing it like keep that in mind which side is the face and which side is going to be the back because you probably want to make that chin nice and and rounded and give them a nice chubby round face um, now I've I've actually got some really just some really cheap budget polyester stuffing, but I did say in the uh, the run up to this um, that uh, it was um, you know you could just use whatever you've got to hand for stuffing. If you don't have toy stuffing, because not everyone does, not everyone does as much crafting, and some people don't have lots of space to like have a huge stash of materials. So just use whatever you've got to stuff your usakuma. Um, it can be. Um, you know, cotton wool, or you might have like an old cushion that you can take apart and use as stuffing. Um, it's quite good, actually. You can pick in chat or charity shops or thrift stores. You can pick up um, like old cushions and take them apart and use that as stuffing or just some scrap fabric. Um, chop up some scrap fabric that you might have. Um, yeah, just use whatever you've got. No, no special shopping trips required. I find the other thing, you know, sometimes I don't know if anyone here has experience making soft toys in the more regular way, um, but um, I sometimes find you have to, like, be very, um, like, careful about how you soft stuff toys to, like, make them nice and firm, make sure they are stuffed nice and smoothly so you don't end up with lumpy results. Um, for this, I don't think you need to worry about that because it's so stretchy, the material, and if you've, especially if you've got a fluffy sock. You can literally, you know, you don't need to worry about it looking a bit lumpy or anything like that. What I'm just considering here, I'm just going to tell you what I'm thinking. Um, I'm trying to make a point of not stuffing the ears too much. Um, I'm choosing to stuff my ears just a little bit. But if you want to, you can just leave them flat. You can, if you've done long ones, you might want to not stuff them at all and have them dripping down. In that case, what you might want to do is do a few, you know, a few stitches across the base of the ear just to stop it from, um, you know, inflating with stuffing. Okay, so that is, I'm, I'm feeling like that's not looking bad. 
I think I want his head to be a little bit rounder. I keep saying him, um, you know, because I just do. Um, but, you know, Usakuma's obviously a gent that likes to wear his pink fluffy bonnets. Why not? Okay, I'm just putting a little, I'm just put a bit more into the head. And then I'm going to sew up that hole. And I'm just going to kind of squish the stuffing around to make sure it's nice and round. I want, um, I want like the lower half of the face to be nice and chubby as well. Um, yeah, I think that's good. Okay, I'm getting my little body and I'm just going to do like a little, a little size test. That's looking okay. I think I feel like that's nice. I like that. I'm actually I'm now pushing a little bit of the stuffing down out of the ears because now that I pushed on the body, I felt that my ears were were too fat. Okay, I'm just gonna pull the ears up. Okay. I feel like just a little a little bit more like in the front of his face to just really round out that little kind of nose and chin area, I think. The other nice thing you do is like, you know, once you've actually finished this little plushie, you can always just grab a big pin and kind of poke around with the pin and move the stuffing around a bit if you want to rearrange it. OK, I'm going to I'm going to crack on. So I'm happy with how that's stuffed. I know I can kind of squish it around to get the shape nice later on if I need to. So I'm now going to um, sew up the little hole in between his ears so I've got a, a knot in the end of my thread. Hide a few more tea cakes in one cheek. <laughs> Love it. Now, to close this hole, um, I am doing a ladder stitch. Now, I think there's probably other names for ladder stitch, but the best way to explain what a ladder stitch is, is basically it looks like a ladder. That's why I call it ladder stitch. So what you're doing is you're sort of doing stitch a stitch on one side, down and up, and then you go over to the other side and down and up. Let me just, if I hold that up to camera, hopefully, there you go. There you go. You can kind of, can you see that there on camera? So it's got, so I've done like a stitch and then over a stitch and then over. So what happens is you have like the rungs of a ladder visible across the hole. And then when you pull your thread, the whole thing just snaps up into a straight line and there's no visible stitches. So for, for closing holes like this, I like to use a ladder stitch. That's um, illustrated on the second page of the, the worksheet. Um, so on the second page of the worksheet, it has, you know, that kind of that gathering thread that we did to close the neck. And it's got the details of the ladder stitch as well. And okay, being so way messier and doing a whip stitch because it's so funny. Do a whip stitch as well. Yeah, like any, any kind. I mean, at the end of the day, this is like. You know, it's so fluffy. It's never going to show. We're going to put bows and ribbons and frills on. So, yeah, honestly, don't like I, I'm being technical just because I think it's nice to give you a bit more information. But just sew it up like really don't worry about it too much. Um, I'm also going to just quickly with that same thread. I'm just going to do a little I'm going to do a few little stitches across the base of the ears as well um, to like hold that stuffing that's in the ears in place. Um, my is my Usakuma is going to have lovely big bows on its ear like this one here. The micro heart fiber hides all the stitch sins. This is so true. Um, yeah, this is all all the sins really are going to get hidden for this one, I think. So I've just done a few little stitches just across the ear to hold that stuffing in position. And I've now got to I've now got to restart my thread to do the other. Way. You just there you go. If I just hold this up to show you, there we are. So you can see this one here. I've sewn across the ear. So now I can kind of push that stuffing around. I can push the stuffing now more into the cheek now that I've sewn across that and kind of round out the side of his face. Oh my god, oh. drama! <laughs> Sorry, I did that that loud noise I hear, heard was a car accident. <laughs> Oh no! Oh my gosh! Yeah, the, the the fire engine just pulled up. I don't think it was major. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. This is so off topic, but we're all sewing, so I'm going to tell you the funniest story. This okay. is such a 
a lockdown in London story. Okay, so my little sister lives in Brixton, mm -hmm. um, which is South London. And okay, so she, she lives on her own and she lives um, in the top flat in a block of flats. And um, last weekend, the weather was rubbish. So uh, she she um, thought what well, she, she's got a big screen television on the wall and to kind of create a nice cozy atmosphere. She put a like one of those videos that you find on YouTube that's like 10 hours of log fire footage. Right up on her big TV screen. Can you see where this is going? Oh no, I love it already she though. She up on her TV screen, okay? And she then went and had a shower. Uh, one of her neighbors- God bless them. <laughs> looked through the window <laughs> and thought her house was on fire. God bless, they, they were trying their best. <laughs> All the fire brigade, but this is this is this is like central London, central South London, and a block of flats. So obviously they send three fire engines. So mm -hmm. my sister has to open the door in a towel with wet hair to a whole load of <laughs> fire. This is amazing. Oh, it's just brilliant. And and the best bit was they 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 thought this was absolutely hysterical and they have now advised her that she should only bother putting snow scenes on her television in the future. That's funny. Um, that's a great it's, story. Oh, it's got such a good story. Anyway, there you go. That's but that's um, you know, that's that's just that's lockdown London life for you. Everyone's <laughs> trapped in home, go, trapped at home going slightly insane. But a funny story, my friend of mine, two of my friends live in the same apartment complex, a little bit in a, like a town down the way. And just kind of at the start of lockdown, they had to evacuate because there was a little bit of a fire. It wasn't serious. But mm. my speculation was that it was like somebody who never cooked at home before trying to learn how to cook because <laughs> everything was closed. <laughs> and sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Oh, <laughs> it was somebody who never used their stove before and like just mm. epically fail. <laughs> it's, like, it's like first year at university, you know, when like in, in we call them we call them student halls in in England, um, and like everyone sets off their fire alarms during the first few weeks. Yeah. Okay, I am now cracking on with I got my head done. Do, do, do with my little ears sewn so that the stuffing stays on the top and I've kind of given him a squidge to kind of make him nice and round I've got my body done okay we need arms next so you should at this point if you've been using two pairs of socks you should end up with like two toes and two like little uh, other things you know what actually you can like save save your toes because you can really easily make little you know I talked about making blob plushies I call these basic blobs where it's just a blob and then you add features. You can use the toes to make some blobs later on if you want to. Anyway, um, so you just need one of these um, and we're just going to do some little arms quickly. So same again, make sure you've got the right side inside. So it's inside out. I want mine to be fluffy. So my fluffy side is on the inside. And I'm going to now just again doodle on some little arms. Um, if, like me, you're going for the sort of short, fat, cute version, keep them quite short. Um, for this one here, you can see the arms are about the same length as the feet. If you do like arms that are longer than feet, it's kind of going to throw the proportions off and it's going to look a bit wonky. So you definitely don't want your arms. But, you know, I mean, you might want to do a funny looking like but personally i think make sure your arms are about the same length as your legs um so keep them quite short so again i'm just going to draw on here little 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 there we go one again i'm doing them side by side so that i can check that they're the same length there we are okay okay i've just drawn on there you go i'll hold that up there you go you can all see that Two little arms. Same, same again. Just same thing. Needle and thread. Do your back stitch. Um, obviously, these are going to be two separate pieces, so you want to, you know, don't sew straight across both of them. You want to make sure you stop and restart the next one because obviously we're going to cut through in the middle to separate them out. So Got yeah, keep them separated. Gotta keep them separated exactly. So yeah, again, just a nice, nice chunky back stitch. 
It's all super stretchy, doesn't need to be neat. We're just getting the rough shape. There's um, a lot of drawing of little butt shapes, essentially. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, it is lots of, it's just lots of little butt shapes that we're stitching, isn't it, really? Um, and it's not, it's not really very dissimilar for, um, for any of the other designs too. I'm going to put, actually, you know, while we're stitching this, I'm going to pull one of my little cats in so I can talk, tell you a little bit about the cat. So the cat, the cat's another workshop I do. Touche Bunny Day. Yes, it is Touche Bunny Day. Touche Bunny Usakuma. Um, the little cats, again, I make them out of two pairs of socks. Um, the head is basically done in almost exactly the same way um, as we did the heads, but just with pointy ears instead. Oh, thank you. I think the kittens are cute too. For anyone that missed my other kitten, here's the other one. This is again a little, I'll turn him around so you can see his back. There we are. That's a little tigery one. Or leopard, leopard, I should say. Um, so the, the heads are basically done in exactly the same way. Um, I do the, um, the bodies a bit differently because obviously they have long arms front and back. And I, um, I use, again, the heel to make the the bottom of the cat so it's got a nice little chubby bottom um now i said i'd mentioned very briefly about pattern socks so thank you <laughs> you guys are too sweet <laughs> um i said i'd mentioned briefly about pattern socks because um sometimes you get socks where the heel is either a different color or it might be like, it might not have a pattern on it to the rest of the sock, um, which you can sometimes use as a nice feature. So I said earlier on, when I made this one, the heel of these socks was blank. It didn't have any spots on it. So I use the heel to make the muzzle of the cat. And it's nice because then you've got that sort of facial de detail. Now, I also use the heel to make the bottom of this cat because I wanted him to have a nice little plump bottom because that's cute. Um, um, and obviously that meant he had a, a bare bottom with no spots on. Um, so actually, um, you can see I've, I've rectified that. What I actually did is using my scraps, I cut out a couple of spots from like the leftover scraps from the sock and I just appliqued on a couple of extra spots on his bottom to disguise the fact that he had an unpatterned bottom. So that's a little that's a little trick you can do. I just kind of appliqued on, and honestly, kind of like if I feel him, I can feel that there's like another, you know, I can feel that there's a bit sewn on. Um, but because he's fluffy, like visually, you cannot tell at all. So you can do little clever things like that, like to sort of, especially if definitely if you've got fluffy socks, you can literally cut and paste bits and sew other scraps on and the fluffiness just hides all the seams. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the tail again, just, um, just out of whatever little scrap was left over. Um, this tail here, you see he's got like a little um blank bit on the end of his tail so again i used on this particular pair of socks i used the toe of the sock and i made that a little feature so that he had like a little tip to his tail i just sort of caught the toe of the sock into that bit anyway right okay i've just about finished doing my little arms sorry don't worry if you're not keeping up with the stitching because we are rattling through this because we've got about just under half an hour left and I want to make sure I, I give you a fully, a fully pretty little Usakuma to see at the end of this. Okay, I'll move my kitties back out. Like kitties have come, kitties have come back over here. Back with Mr. Penguin. Okay, so I've just done, so just using one of the leftover bits I had, I've just sewn two little arms. And now I'm going to just chop those out. Again, cutting a little seam allowance. And up the middle between the two arms, because obviously they need to be separated. Um, I said earlier, you, we don't need to clip any curves for this workshop. If, you, if you've if you joined a bit later on, there's no curve clipping because the fabric we're using is so stretchy. You do not need to clip any curves. And I'm just going to cut straight across the end as well, making sure I've, um, you know, not cut through my threads. And I'm going to turn my little arms inside out. There we go. And now... I'm actually, um, I'm not going to stuff those because I'll stuff them as I sew them on. 
So now we're going to start assembling. We're going to turn these random bits. So I've got two little hands, two little arms, a little head and a little burny bottom here with legs on. So I'm going to get myself a new nice big bit of thread. There we are. And we're going to attach, well, we're going to attach the head onto the body. And for this, I am just, you know, it's fluffy. We're going to put like lace and ribbon around its neck. So the stitches don't need to be neat. So don't worry. But I am going to tell you that I am going to do like a ladder stitch again as I attach this on. So I'm going to hold it on top. And then what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to I'm going to do like a stitch, stitch through the stitch through the, the neck, stitch through the body, stitch through the head, stitch through the body. And I'm going to go round in a circle. So basically alternating. Imagine what you're doing is you're basically stitching a, a circular line of stitches round the neck of your bunny. So I'm going to start on the body. I'm just going to bury my knot quickly. And I'm going to do a couple of just a little stitch on top of it, just to make sure it's come undone. And then it's it's because it's two 3D shapes. You, I think it's a bit tricky to try and pin these together. So I wouldn't worry about it. I just sort of hold them, hold them alongside each other and just sort of do a stitch through. There you go. So I've done a stitch through the head, stitch through the body. And I'm just, and again, what I'm doing again, I'm creating like, Hopefully you can see that there. I'm creating like little ladder like stitches so that there's little bars running between the head and the body. And the nice thing about doing this is I would say to start off with, just, just stitch it on. Don't worry about it looking perfect because what you can do, just sew it on in the middle so it's kind of centered on the neck. And then if you feel like you want it to be joined on a bit more sturdily or you want to like make the neck a bit wider you can just go around again just keep stitching around in a circle just do more stitches across where you've already stitched until you're happy how with how it's joined on and um i mentioned earlier a, a little bit earlier on just about you know, just thinking about the angle of your head because you don't want your you don't really want your usakuma to be like leaning backwards too much so you know, just be aware of that as you stitched on that you want it to kind of be sort of nicely up on the top of the head, not so it's kind of keeling backwards over. Oh, uh, would you apply some glue to the center area? Help if you're having trouble holding it together. You know what? Actually, I think if you if you um you could definitely attach on with a glue gun if you wanted to. Um, yeah, there's nothing to stop you from using a glue gun for this particular bit. You could totally glue gun it together or you could do like a blob of glue in the middle and hold just hold it in the middle and then do your stitching round. If I was doing this workshop with some very impatient children, because children kind of seem to have like a bit of an attention, like some children could concentrate on crafts for hours. But then you get other kids who just like that like after about 20 minutes or so, they're over it and they just want to get it finished quickly. Uh, someone saying aka me hey nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that so yeah um if you want to glue gun your bunny's head no one will judge you we're gonna cover it in ribbons and lace no one will know we will keep your secret okay right i've i'm actually i'm actually just doing a few more stitches round the front. so I've, I've gone all the way around in a circle once already and i'm actually just doing a few more little stitches across the front just to to pull it down even more right okay and i think how's that looking i think i think that's okay i think that's okay it's his head staying on i'm happy the head's staying on i'm gonna stop a little yep yeah. okay so i'm gonna do a few stitches on top of each other again this this the neck doesn't need to be neat don't worry if you stitch your show will or liters we're gonna put like a whole load of lace and frills on it so huh, doesn't matter if your stitching's messy okay all right and cut my thread off there you are so that is my little head joined onto my little body i said his face is sort of can you see his face is sort of looking a bit wonky at the moment but that's not a problem because we can totally just squish it around give him a bit of like plastic surgery and make him look prettier there we go. Just squish him until he's the shape you want him to be. 
Oh, something I didn't, you know what? One of the really cute things on the cats that I didn't show you. On my little cats, we, we've talked about bottles so much, but on the cats, obviously, if you end up making cats, you can do a little button, button, little X for a butthole. So cute, has to be done. Okay, I'm gonna do the arms added on now. So I'm going to pop a little bit of stuffing in my arms. He's not sitting up at the moment. He's not sitting up because he doesn't have a tail yet. So this one here has a tail. The tail acts like a tripod. Woohoo! So he can sit up. But this one doesn't have a tail. So we're giving him a bit of thread to hold him upright for the moment. Okay, I'm gonna stuff a little a little bit of stuffing into the arms. Again, I'm not going too mad on the arm stuffing here because I want him to have little short arms because I think that looks cute. <laughs> Someone's saying they're going to do a pom pom purr in sock plushie. That sounds brilliant. Yes, you could totally do um, all the Sanrio characters. You know, in fact, the way we're doing this here, it would be really easy to make like a Hello Kitty kind of character. Like this actually isn't far off the body shape of Hello Kitty at all. Um, you definitely want to keep the body very small and the head very big. Um, Haley, that looks like a bunny rabbit. <laughs> Love Long it. Boy. Long boy bunny rabbit, I like it. This is Usakuma's uh, very tall cousin. <laughs> Long bun. <laughs> okay, so I have, I've, I put a little bit of stuffing in my thing. I've just done like a little down up, down up running stitch around the edge just to kind of help me pull those edges in. I'm not gonna close the hole up completely because we're gonna sew it on, but it's just to help me like get those edges poking in with so i've just pulled it up a little bit you can see there's still a hole in the middle and now i'm just going to do a couple of little back stitches here so sorry i said that very quickly if anyone missed it so around the top of the arm i just did a little running stitch drawstring um just to kind of, i pulled it up a little bit just to kind of help it form that rounded shape and that will make it easier when i then attach it onto the body so i've done a few so i did my drawstring pulled it up a little there's still a bit of a hole because I don't want it pulled up really tight. And um, I've done a few stitches to stop it coming undone, um, that gathered thread coming undone. And now I'm going to use the same bit of thread to attach it onto the body. So I, you can see on this one here, I've kind of done them so they're like pointing upwards. So quite up high next to the um, next to the next to the neck. And um just think about where your see if you've got visible seam lines so actually at the moment my seam lines are quite visible um this is very fluffy so, so i can definitely like fluff it up and make those less visible but just you know you might want to think about like positioning it so the seam lines to the sides so that when you look at it face on they're less visible so again i'm just going to exactly the same way that we join the head on i'm going to just do like little a little circle of stitches so a stitch through a stitch through the body and a stitch through the arm so again we're doing that kind of ladder stitch um going around in a circle just around the base of the arm and you can pull it tight as you go just to sort of pull it down onto the body um i'm leaving i'm like i'm going quite high up next to the cheek of the rabbit but obviously remembering, you know, we are probably going to be tying ribbons and bows around the neck of this bunny. So you will want to make sure you can still sew. Definitely you don't want to be sewing your, your arm onto the cheek of your rabbit by accident because we're going to want to get our nice ribbon bow around the centre later on. I've got 15 minutes. Okay. Right, we got fifteen minutes, Haley. Okay, we need to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Well, sleep. we have a little overage time. So oh, do we? Well, we always I'm... had all of our events to have fifteen minutes between panels, so you are welcome to use that time a little bit. Super. Don't tempt me. I can literally talk for England, and I do talk for England. So <laughs> don't tempt me to run over. When I do, I do a lot of like um like private online workshops. In fact, that is something I should have mentioned. I'm so bad at self promotion. Um. Jessica has Mrs. Weasley energy to me. I love it. Thank you so much. I'm going to take that as a huge compliment. Um, <laughs> love a bit of Molly Weasley. Um, so, um, yeah, I when I do, um, I do a lot of public workshops online, and we will make sure there you go. We've the link has popped in. If you are interested in doing of my 
any of my other workshops, um, a lot of them are like, they're not all Lolita and Jay fashion related, but I generally do things that are sort of like cute, pretty vintage, lots of overlap with, um, you know, Lolita fashion and Jay fashion. Um, yes. So feel free to find that link that's in the comments there and uh, subscribe on my website. Um, and you can also find me on Instagram as well. Um, on Instagram, I go by the name at Jessica underscore Flapjack, which you can see in my in my name here on the screen. Um, but yeah, feel free to hunt me down on Instagram and you will be able to see. Um, I don't sell handmade stuff, um, but what I, I do do is I'm an events coordinator. So I run a lot of arts and crafts events and I put all the photos from all the events on my blog. Um, I also have a, I also run, there is a group called the Atome Sewing Bee, which is a, um, it is a, it's a sewing club for uh, J fashion, predominantly Lolita and kind of pretty vintage style. And we actually, there we go, the link has just appeared. Um, so that is, and if you're watching some capture, we'll make sure that link is in the comments as well. So I run the Atomic Sewing Bee, which is a sewing club, and it's an event sewing club. And it's a group on Facebook. And uh, we have regular um, Lolita and J Fashion like sewing workshops. And we do workshops like this, where we actually like all follow an actual project. And then we also do, um, you know, just like bring your own project sewing days. Um, it used to be before before a, a pandemic occurred, we used to have a monthly meetup um, in London, either in like a lovely cafe or at my house. And I convert my living room into like a big studio with loads of tables and desks and things. Um, but when the pandemic happened, we went online and um, we do, we actually do every Sunday at 2 p.m. UK time. Um, so that if you're in the States, that's going to be like earlier in the morning for you. Um, we, every single Sunday since like last April, we do Sunday Sewing Club. And it's basically just a, everyone turns up on Zoom. Sometimes we do a project. Sometimes everyone brings their own project. And it's just a big, messy, very informal chatter group with lots of crafting. Um, and actually, someone's just done one of the time conversions of PST. And EST, thank you so much. But also on the Atome Sewing Bee, on the events page for Sunday Sewing Club, I always put the time conversions for different areas of the states as well. Because personally, like, I can't just look at, like, a time code and know what time it is in my own country. So I always try and put, like, a few different time codes just to help more people get an idea of what time of day that's going to be for them. Okay, other arm is going on. So I've just, again, I've just done a little drawstring round the top of my arm. Haley, you are, you are forging ahead. I think I'm you're trying. Ahead. He's so cute. I love him. I love him. He's like your misty sky tall boy bunny. I love it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to just sew my other little arm on now. So yeah, Tommy sewing bee, if you, if you like what's happening today and you like the kind of informality and chattiness of this session do do come and hunt down the Atome Sony and join us um we're a very uh, friendly bunch and because we sort of do it every week the focus is always on the crafts so a lot of people do love to get dressed up but equally if you just want i mean we're on lockdown for god's sake you know if you want to come in your pajamas go for it a lot of people just come in like you know jeans and a t-shirt, whatever they happen to be wearing. It's not one of those Lolita communities where you have to come looking spectacular and spend an hour doing your hair. Goodness me knows, I don't. Um, so yeah, it's really it's really friendly. It's very informal. Um, if English is not your first language, uh, we have had a lot of people that have been with us s literally for like the last seven or eight months who don't speak English as a first language. And they've been turning up every Sunday for Sunday Sewing Club. Their English has improved so much. So it's it's just lovely to see. Um, so yeah, if you don't speak English as first language, don't be shy. Come and come and hang out. Um, we're very, very friendly. 
Right, okay, I think I am nearly there. I'm just gonna do my last couple of stitches and then we get onto the bit you have all been looking forward to, which is, um, someone says, excuse to wear cute pajamas. It is, yes, any excuse to wear cute pajamas. Um, I have a very nice pair of Hello Kitty pajamas that I rather enjoy wearing for Zoom meetings. Um, we're now getting on to the bit we've all been looking forward to fun bit where we start dressing up our little isakuma so here's my little guy here and i'm feeling i'm feeling pretty happy with that and he's got his little arms and his little legs and his chubby little bottom oh he needs a tail doesn't he oh my gosh i nearly forgot his tail okay the tail really easy just grab one of your scraps grab one of your scraps equally if you're like rushing to keep up with us and please don't feel you need to um you can just add the tail on afterwards as well so i just i just grabbed a scrap and i'm just cutting a little a little circle out of the scrap and again just exactly the same as like how we joined on the arms i'm just gonna got a little little circle it's not perfect it doesn't matter and then i'm just gonna do a little running stitch around the edge of my circle and draw it up and put a bit of stuffing in it to make his little tail. And then he will be able to sit up because his tail will act as like a little, a little sort of tripod -y bit to help him up, stay upright. Now, I don't own a real Usakuma, but am I right in thinking they're normally bags, aren't they? And they have zips in. There's Usakuma um, rucksacks, but I think there's just plushies too. Oh, okay. Oh, so you do get plushies and rucksacks. I I I wasn't entirely sure. I'm not a sweet Lolita myself. I'm more of kind of like kind of classic. Um, but, so there's uh, a zipper in the, on the head usually, I guess. Ah, uh, okay. Well, yeah, I just thought I'd mention it because if you are a, like a very good sewer or seamstress, um, you you could maybe tackle doing like a sock plushie bag. I'll be honest, I've not tried it because like sock fabric is so stretchy and you know depending on what socks you have it may or may not unravel so if you're a really if you're like a really good seamstress you know and you want to have a go at doing like an usakuma sock plushy bag um <laughs> someone someone is showing a lot of love for your tall bully oh he's cute <laughs> i do like him a lot um I just I think those are fantastic socks you've got there and it's so nice that it's actually really nice that you're doing a pattern sock um to kind of contrast with my plain one that I'm doing. That's, we did all they had that was in a like lovely pastel color or like everything else was like gray and I was like eh. yeah. <laughs> also, you know what one of the things I've been meaning to do is I and I the shops are all shut in England obviously at the moment um but uh, i'm just quickly i'm just gonna i've got my little there's my little tail still on a string and i've just draw stringed it up into a little ball again i'm just gonna sew that onto his bottom just again little ladder stitch round in a circle to hold it on um one of the things i've been meaning to do and i've not had a chance to get this um i in in primark which is sort of like the uk equivalent of um target uh they have gorgeous fluffy socks in the children's section and I keep meaning to uh, look in the kids sections and try and find some like little like little fluffy toddler socks and make some tiny sock plushies out of them. Oh my goodness. That's on my shopping. I just think it'd be really cute. Every everything is cute in miniature, isn't it? So I am, um, yeah, that's something that I want to do at some point. So yeah, top tips. They often give the, they often give the little girls the cute pastel colored socks, don't they? So. Go and have a check in the kids section if you can't. If if like Haley, you just found lots of ugly grey ones in the adult section, go and check the kids section too. Luckily, Daiso's got a lot of kawaii stuff. It's just like the 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 one I went to just happened to have a lot of very yeah. dark ones. It's sometimes a seasonal thing as well, isn't it? Like in the winter, you can find lots of these like nice slippery socks in the shops, and and then in the summer um yeah you could never find these in the summer in like target but they have them at daiso almost always because they're called room stocks yeah yeah so they, they're just kind of like stuff you would wear around the house kind of like instead of slippers he has a tail yay and now he sits up hurrah we're just this is just genius i love it i love it so much okay put a polka dot on his butt ah polka dot on his butt is that on his tail yep 
Oh, how cute. That's, I love it. That's so sweet. going to try and center it. Pray for me. <laughs> Genius. Brilliant. Someone says, I am literally wearing those blue Daiso socks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I just, I'm, I'm getting so jealous of you guys. I'm, I I'm wish sorry. we had you in the UK. It's so unfair. Well, we don't have them on the East Coast, so. Mm. Uh, I take it back. They, they just got a few in New York, I think. Yeah. Come to but London. I didn't have them growing up either. If anyone knows anyone at works at Daiso, tell them we need a shop in London. Okay. Right. Um, oh my gosh, I'm like so we're so close to the wire on this. Okay, but I'm gonna very quickly talk about decorations. So obviously, um, you can use all different kinds of things to decorate. Here's one that I did earlier. Um, so uh, Usakuma normally has bows on his ears. It has a bit of lace um, to make a little frilly bonnet. Um, for this one, I actually also put a little bit of gathered race lace around the neck um, as well to kind of give it a collar. And then I found a rather cute little like heart charm um, in my stash. And I gave him um, little pink pink eyes because it's an albino bunny i gave him little pink beads um pink, these are pink buttons for eyes um they are buttons with four holes one thing i will say is if you're gonna do if you've got a four hold button just be a bit careful about how you stitch it on because unless you want to go for that if you have like a really visible cross in the middle of the eye it looks like a creepy dead bunny so um, yeah coralline vibes bang on um so unless you're going for that look be aware of that because you don't want to make a gorgeous bunny and then have it look dead when you sew the eyes on. Anyway, um, so yeah, you can just add various bits and pieces. Um, I've got a few buttons here. I, I've looked at a whole load of different buttons, but I think I am going to do pink ones. Those look quite nice. Yeah, I'm going to do some pink buttons, I think, for his eyes. Um, for the face, on this one here, so when you do the facial features, you can do those in a number of different ways. So you might want to like cut out a little triangle of felt. And so you know, I actually just embroidered a little nose here and then embroidered some little facial features. Um, if I show you some of my other ones, so this one I've got here, this little cat, again, an embroidered nose. This one has a little bit of fabric sewn on for the nose it's quite cute these ones have these sort of round black buttons for us so they're just like round black plastic buttons you can probably buy them for a dollar or two on ebay very cheaply like a big pack which will be enough to like, do loads of different plushies so that's nice for these ones but usakuma like the typical usakuma has like quite large pink eyes so i decided to go for sort of larger pink buttons for this usakuma's eyes um and the other bits and pieces we've got so i've got some lace here this is a very pretty lace we've got Fally express i don't think i'm going to gather this i think i'm just going to go just put it over the top like a little headdress there you go if i cut that off there we are i'm going to put that over the top i'm just going to pin this in place because i know we're getting a bit a bit close to the end here now but just so you guys can kind of get the idea and hopefully I will not lose any pins into my, I just realized as I was doing that, I could very easily end up with a whole load of pins stuck inside my bunny if I'm not careful. Okay, a little a little lace over the top as a headdress. Um, I'm going to use the extra to do a little, a little bow around its neck, I think. I really, this lace is beautiful, so I thought a nice lacy bow would be really pretty. Are you filming? It's okay, I'm just on the overhead. My husband popped by. <laughs> like, What's happening? Do you want to make a sock plushie? Huh? Look, I made it for you, babe. <laughs> he just said, it's not a bear. It's not a bear. Well, she'll make you a bear one. <laughs> okay. You got a little little lacy bow on him. And for the ribbons for this one. Quite, go, you, you can go big on the bows, big, big, big bows. Why not? Let's just put all the bows on. Um, I was looking for my ribbons, thinking I'll just use some plain bit ribbons, but then I thought it is coming up to Valentine's Day and I found I had this, I don't know if you can see, it's got a little, like a little heart design on. So I've done it. Yeah, so I thought we're gonna, it, it's Valentine's Day. Let's do some little heart, heart ribbons. So I've actually 
tied some of these earlier on. So I'm going to just pin these in place. So one on each ear. So cute. It's so cute. Okay, I got long boy to stand. I was working on that for a second. Oh, well done. Oh, what? Because he's he's a tall boy. So he yeah. does. Right, does he? He does now. Yay! And he sewed well his little feet down so they, they have a little more of a crease. Brilliant. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's a very, so it's good. It's like a really good stable base now, isn't it? That's a really yeah. good idea. So guys, that's a good, actually, it's a really good tip that Haley's just done there. If you, if you find yours isn't sitting up and staying upright, you could maybe do what Haley did and like just do a few stitches to stabilize the base. There we go. Or you could yeah. use um those PVC pellet beads, those nurdles. Yeah. To give it some weight in the butt instead of stuffing it with all cotton. Oh, do I have some? I'm just gonna quickly. Like, what trims do I even have? <laughs> I'm looking around. I just grabbed my whole box of trims and just went mad. Yeah, watch. everything I have is like you know big size. Though I don't have like small petite anything really. Okay, I've just put some pins in his eyes to hold them on quickly. And then the other thing you can, I said, mentioned before, you could use some felt. So I, this is just my scraps of felt that I have. I know we're running over a little bit, but we'll, we'll wrap it up in the next couple of minutes so that there is a little break between the next one. Um, okay, so I've got some scraps of felt here. I think I might just use a little bit of felt to make use of those. Do I have some? Ooh. Oh, here we go. I have the perfect tiny scrap of dark pink felt i think that will make a very nice little nose so yeah you could as i said like use a bit of felt or a bit of fabric to make the nose um or you can embroider if you like embroidering you can just embroider a nose on as well um i've put there's deep on the um on the worksheet the pdf instruction sheet You've linked before and it'll be in the description if you're watching this on catch up um, on the second page of the worksheet i've got a bit of details about like different ways that you can do those features as well um and usakuma has a little mouth normally he's got like like i've done here he's got that little mouth detail um so if you want to you can embroider that on if you really aren't confident embroidery you know you might just want to draw it on with a permanent marker you know don't We'll do whatever do whatever works for you um on some of my other ones i don't give them mouths i i don't know why i just think they look quite cute without mouths but it's kind of it's up to you but usakuma normally does have a little mouth um there we go so we stand it together now usakuma if you are if you are trying to make your own poor lolita's version of usakuma usakuma's other detail is it normally has the baby logo Someone says, for the lace hood on the white USA, how did you attach the lace? Just sewn down one side. Oh, um, so on this one. Um, so it is for this Usu, for this one, I'll try and hold up to camera. It's I gathered the lace and then I actually like like sewed it onto another bit of lace to hold it gathered. So it really was like a bonnet that I could attach on. And then I've just sewn it all the way across. So, yeah, because, um, you know, you don't want it to flop down. So this one, I've only this one, I've just pinned it. But what I will do is even though I've just pinned it at both sides on the base, I will actually sew all the way across to like really securely keep it in place. Um, if you sew all these little features and ribbons and things on and you've been like careful about picking things that, you know, you can wash, um, you could, in theory, be able to throw your usakuma in the washing machine. Worth it making this for children um but yeah if you, if you want to make it for kids and you want to put it in the washing machine just make a point of picking um things that can go in the washing machine i'm going to pin on another little ribbon on his chin well i actually looked out i had like i found a little teddy bear charm but i thought maybe i could like sew under his bow or maybe like a little bell or something that might be quite cute um but usakuma the original usakuma has the heart baby logo normally on its foot on its on its left foot so i obviously i didn't want to copy the baby logo because you no know, baby this is by me but i did want that little heart detail so this one i've just you can see i've done like a little embroidered heart onto that one um 
but equally you could also like you might want to use like a piece of felt if you've got felt cut out a little felt heart and stitch that on or um you know you might have i don't you might have like something heart shaped i actually in my stash randomly i don't know if you see it, i found this little like diamonte heart that i had i was like oh maybe maybe he can have a sparkly heart on his foot it's just random like i have all kinds of little bits and bobs in my use whatever you've got to finish it off um i'm gonna kind of wrap it up there um so hopefully a few of you have been joining in and um oh hayley i just have to say i love that mouth i think someone else commented on it too but you've done the it that's like the miffy mouth you know how yeah next for a mouth um that is that is gorgeous i love it i'm trying so, to find, i know somewhere in this like giant cluster fuck of a, of a sewing room i have a pack of animal eyes yeah i do somewhere so i'm trying to find them but if i find them i'll post a picture later i, well, I was going to mention actually another really nice way to do eyes is if you have a button you can sew a button onto a bit of felt like that and then cut the felt out around the bottom a bit wider so that you get like a black pupil and um, white around the eye and that's another really nice way someone's suggesting googly eyes i love googly eyes yes googly eyes also a great idea but yeah hopefully that all kind of made sense um thank you so much everyone that's joined us um it's been absolutely lovely being here part of uh, Ghana Gatto. I believe that coming up next is the fashion walk, is it? I think it should be. Uh, every, every my fingers are crossed. Hotly anticipated. So that will be amazing. So, guys, do not leave. Or maybe get a cup of tea and then come back. Yeah. And yep. watch the walk after this. And um, we'll make sure all my comments, all my links, you know, to my website, my Instagram, you can find all of that later on. Okay, I'm going to head off now. So thank you so much, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the events. Bye. Bye.